Hello, how y'all doing? Today, this lesson is going to be about um, certain things and um, your Bible being subject to interpretation. And I'm going to show you how um, Jesus was doing deceptive practices um, in the New Testament. Um, let's go right here. The phrase subject to interpretation. If something is open to interpretation, its intended meaning is not clear and the people have and people may have different opinions about it. Beckett's play is open to various interpretations. And, okay. So that means that it can be perceived in many ways. Now, if you have anything that's subject to interpretation or can be perceived in many ways, then that means there's a lack of objectivity and clarity in whatever it is that you're dealing with. So, oh, let's look at, I'm going to go to Matthew. Um, I don't show this scripture before, but it's, I'm going to show it again because you need to understand this language that they're using. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the day of John the Baptist to now the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. So he is saying here again, this is deceptive language. There is no clarity in it. He's saying, if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. Meaning, um, if you believe it. So he's not being specific. He's not being clear on what it is he's saying. All right. So that's subject to interpretation. Now, the whole book of the Bible is subject to interpretation, especially if you look at the book of Revelations. There's a lot of things that's subject to interpretation. If you look at the various denominations all over the world, that shows you that there's a lot of perception um, and and no clarity because if there was clear it wouldn't be all these different denominations and things of this nature. Mm -hmm. Hold on, let me see something. But
through 16. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see and see not, and hear and they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall uh, see, uh, you shall not proceed. Um, for this people heart is wax growth and ears for the, and he keep talking about seeing and see not and all this stuff. Being blessed, you have eyes to see, see not and all this. Now, all of that comes from the book of Isaiah, right? Well, he did, and Jeremiah, oh, you foolish people, would understand him, have eyes to see, see not ears. All he did was copy the Old Testament. Ezekiel, son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of a bay house, which have eyes to see, see not. They did copy each other, right? And... I'm gonna show you something else. He ain't he ain't said nothing new. Right? I'm gonna show you something else. Uh he, okay, verily I said to you the prophet righteous man had desired that go ahead. When where they say that? They said they asked him, they said why do you speak to them in parables? He said, right here. This is going to show you that Jesus was being very, very deceptive in his actions. And he changed the whole format. He says, and the disciples came and said unto him, Why speak you thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but unto them it is not given. For whosoever have to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever have not from him shall be taken away even that which you have. Now that don't even make sense. I don't, I don't know what type of interpretation someone would give you to make that make sense, but none of, nothing about that makes sense. He said, Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see and see not, and hear and hear not. Okay. Now, and it say right here, And he's talking about his, his, um, Isaiah. After that, he was talking about the prophet Isaiah because all he did was copy from Isaiah anyway. Um, uh, let's see. Talking about these parables, all this stuff right here is parables. Um, parables. Now, right here. It say all things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables. And without a parable spake he not unto them. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. Now, it's in my opinion that every time you hear the words, um, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken about, that it might be fulfilled is an admission of guilt by the writer. That it might be fulfilled, this is the writer telling on themselves that they were looking back at the Old Testament and these so-called prophecies being fulfilled by Jesus, it just added in or, or scripted narratives to make the Old Testament seem like it came through, came to pass through Jesus. 
So when you see that it might be fulfilled, it is a admission of guilt by the writers. Um, saying, and right here it says that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. It don't even say what prophet it's talking about. And it's not talking about Isaiah. I'm going to show you where you get that from. Now, I just read to you. I just read to you about the um, parables. And the disciples came to me saying, Why speakest thou to them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Now, if we go to Psalm 78, because this is where he's getting his stuff from, Michael of Asap, Give ye ear, O my people, to my law, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. So he's telling the people, I will open my mouth in a parable, I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. Now, he's saying that they know the parables, the people know the parables. Right? Verse 4. We will not hide them from our them from from their children, showing to the generation to come to the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he have done. For he established his testimony in Jacob and pointed the law in Israel, which he commanded our father that they should make them known to our children. That the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who will arise and declare them to their children. So now these parables and stuff that this man, Michael of ASAP, or whatever that is, um, they didn't they didn't hide the parables to talk over people's heads and try to hide the mystery, put mysteries over people's heads like Jesus did. I believe this is where these other um, schools of thought get this stuff from too about mysteries and hiding stuff and putting stuff over people's heads so they would have to come to somebody else to learn something or know something, you know, some kind of something like that. But Jesus said, um, Why speakest thou unto them in a parable? He answered, Because it's given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, his disciples. Uh, of heaven, but to them is not given. So the people didn't know these so-called uh, mysteries of the kingdom that Jesus knew, but he taught them to the disciples. But I just showed you in Psalm 78, which is where he's getting that um which is where he's getting this um, why he's speaking to them in parables and stuff and um, that it might be fulfilled by the prophet saying I will open my mouth in parables Psalm 78 this is where he's getting it from the people of Psalm 78 they told everybody you know, the parables, people knew the parables. They understood the parables. It wasn't hidden from them. There were no mysteries of nothing. 
So it just shows again that Jesus is being very deceptive in his actions. He's copying from the old changing things and um, being very deceptive in his practices. Uh, parables of Jesus. Uh, oh, this same thing. So, there's a lot of things, especially in the New Testament, that are subject to interpretation. Alright? Like I just showed you. And, um, uh, Matthew. Alright? If you will receive it, that's deceptive language, deceptive talk. This is why you have so many denominations because there's no real clarity in the book, right? And um, Jesus was being very deceptive in his actions about uh, speaking to people in parables, like trying to talk over their heads, right? No clarity was given. So, that's it. That's all I wanted to talk about.